My name is Chuck Whitman, and I build great traders that lead great lives. Traders I've trained have generated in excess of a billion dollars in trading revenue and are found in some of the largest proprietary trading firms and hedge funds in the United States. 21 trading tips from Paul Tudor Jones, part two. Today, we're gonna go through tips six through 10. Decrease your trading volume when you are trading poorly. Increase your trading volume when you're trading well. This is very interesting because one of the biggest issues that I see with traders is low win rates. There's a high correlation between their success and their win rate. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. One, traders tend to take their profits too soon, so their wins are too small relative to their losses. The smaller your wins are, the more sensitive you are to win rate. But the second reason, and what is really applicable here, is that when I go through and I look at the distribution of trades, when traders are struggling, I tend to see a higher frequency of trades and I tend to see big losing streaks. These big losing streaks help create the drawdowns that the trader is desperately trying to avoid. So let's talk about this for a minute. Why is this happening? Well, what happens is a trader has a few losses and then they're upset or they feel anxiety that they have lost money. So they try and get it back and they try and get it back by trading more often. The idea is, well, if I'm down 2R, if I'm down 3R, if I can find a winning trade, I'll start to make some of my money back. And what happens is they become impatient. What happens is they jump back in the market in hope of making their money back. But the problem is, is that now they're really focused on just making their money back, not on making high quality trades. So as a result, they get these strings of losses that grow because they're out of sync with the market. And when they're all said and done, they go through a period where maybe they lost two, three, five R, but they actually lose 10, 12, 15 R. And they tend to have seven, eight, 10 losses in a row. And why is this happening? Because the trade quality is quickly deteriorating in an effort to try and get the money back. Some call this revenge trading. I have a few losses, I'm gonna try and get it all back. And now they're just focused on making their money back, not on avoiding further losses. So one of the things I tell traders of mine is that when they get into a cold streak, they wanna slow down. They wanna increase the standard, increase the quality of their trades. If the trades are not meeting a higher threshold, they wait, they hold off. And by doing this, this really helps. So the flip side to this is when traders are doing well, you actually see their trade frequency really go down. And why is this? Because they get a trade on that's working and they feel really good about it. And so they just kind of sit on their hands and they just watch. And what's crazy is often what they're doing is they're not only watching, but in their mind, they're starting to look at, okay, where can I take some profits? Where can I book this as a good trade? So their volume, their transactions actually decline when they're trading well. And that's really interesting because they're, when they're trading well, they're in sync with the market. And if they, if the counter, if it's really bad to trade a lot when you're losing money, well, the opposite would be to trade a lot when you're making money, trade a lot when you're in sync with the market. I'm a big basketball player. And I think about this as a shooter, if I start to get into a slump, I want to hunt extra high quality shots. I want to be patient. I want to get shots that are easy. I want to get in a rhythm. I can't just keep firing. So if I'm 0 for 4, well, then I really need to up my shot selection, be more picky, and that'll get me turned around. Now, the converse to that is when I'm hot, when you get in the zone, every shot you take feels like it's gonna go in. Trading is the same way. When you get in the zone, every trade you make feels like it's going to be a winner. So why don't we trade more when things are going well? Why don't we lean into what we see, what we feel, what our intuition's telling us when things are going well? Never trade in situations that you don't have control. This is a big deal. What we're really talking about is either carrying positions or trying to trade during catalysts. What's a catalyst? An economic report like payrolls or CPI or core PCE or Fed, or Fed announcements or earnings releases. Earnings releases on Nvidia or on Google or on Meta or whatever the stock is. These are, these are points in time where there's a massive amount of new information that's gonna come into the market and is going to disrupt and potentially change the flow of the market. So in these situations, 
we don't have control. If we enter and we carry a break-even position or a losing position into these numbers, we could easily lose two, three, five, ten 10R carrying a position into the number. Now, what's ironic about this is that when you do the research, what you see is a lot of the move, a lot of the money is actually made on the catalyst. So if you're not in, you actually could miss a big chunk of the move. So how do we address this? Well, as I just said, the real issue with the catalyst is that you cannot control your risk. And this is a big problem. This is one of the reasons that I love options. This is one of the reasons I love long options. This is one of the reasons that I love spreads. Because when we're long options or when we have spreads on, we know our max risk. So if we know our max risk and we carry it into a number, we know the most we could lose is one R. The 2R, 5R, 10R losses are not on the table. So if we can be smart, we can actually carry positions into the number that we have asymmetric returns into the number. With long options specifically, when we are long options, we have rights, but we don't have obligations. Rights are another form of control. We have rights. So for long a call and the market goes up, this is great because we can exercise and be long underlying. But if the market goes down, we don't have to do anything. The most we can lose is the premium that we pay. So when we're long options, we have the most control. When we're long spreads, we have control of the downside, which is awesome. But we may not have full, full control of the upside. So there's a, a process of evaluating the two, one against the other, that guides us into the decision. The bottom line is, is that if you can understand options, you maintain a tremendous amount of flexibility and a tremendous amount of control that allows you to carry positions into numbers. And if you get it right, you can make profit from the asymmetry of the strategy you have on. If you have a losing position on that's making you uncomfortable, get out. You can always get back in. Now, what's really interesting, I spend so much time with my students really talking about abundance versus scarcity. And it's interesting because on the surface, a lot of this just seems like woo woo, positive thinking stuff. Like, does this really work? Do we really need to talk about this? Well, it's very important to understand because whether we believe the world is abundant or we believe the world is scarce, it's going to lead us down two different paths of decision-making. One of the things I see is a lot of traders come up with a thesis or an idea that they like, they put the trade on and it's not working. So they become emotionally attached to their idea. And if they take it off for a loss, it's essentially telling them there's no other way they can make money. When we're operating from the belief that this trade has to work, we are in scarcity. This is big to understand. Somebody who believes in scarcity believes that this trade better work because it might be the only one you get. Somebody who lives in abundance has a very different mindset. Somebody who believes in abundance believes, hey, if, if a trade isn't working now, I could get out. I could always get back in. I could always get back in later, but I'll get out for now. A trader who believes in abundance believes the best trades of your career are in your future. They're not in your past. This is something I firmly believe in. I've had some amazing trades. In one trade, I made $7 million in about 20 minutes. Incredible. But having said that, I believe the best trades of my career are in my future. I know more today than I ever have known about the markets. And my best trades are in my future. Well, that is an attitude of abundance. And this matters because if I believe the best trades are in my future, why would I ever stress about the trade I have on now? I don't. There'll be so many opportunities. There's more opportunities than I can handle, to be honest. And occasionally there'll be a trade I can't get back in. That's okay because there'll be another trade coming along that will do really well. I hold to my beliefs of abundance and I believe there will be lots of opportunities. So one of the things I do with traders of mine who have a strong belief in a position, they still believe in it, but they're not making money. What I do is I say, okay, how about this? We're going to cut the position by 25% every day that it's losing. The trade's losing, we're gonna get out of 25%, and then tomorrow, if it's losing again, we'll get out of another 25%. And if it's losing again the next day, we'll get out of another 25%. So what we're doing is we're engaging in this concept I call psychological smoothing. If I get out all of it right now and then it turns on and it works, I might beat myself up because like, oh, I knew it was going to work. But if I get out of 25%, 
and it turns around tomorrow, I'll feel okay because I still have some on. But if it's not working, I'm systematically getting out of 25%. This leads to one of two situations. One, the trade starts to turn around and starts to work. Well, I can go put it back on. Or two, the position's working against me and I cut it by 25%, by 25%, by 25%. And eventually the size of the position gets so small that I don't really even care. Every time I reduce the size of the position, I reduce the strength of the attachment I have to the idea. And you'll find it can be very freeing. Don't be too concerned about where you get into a position. This is a big, big thing for traders. When we're really focused on where our entry price is, it opens the door for us to be thinking about whether a trade is a winner or a loss. As soon as we start thinking about the level where it's a winner versus it's a loss, then it's very easy to transition into the thinking and the need to be right. If I could just get out at break even, it would prove I wasn't wrong. If I could just get out for a small profit, it would prove that I wasn't wrong. This leads to very different behavior, behavior that is not productive. The reality is I should view the position as, is it working or is it not? If it's working, I should hold it or do more. And if it's not working, I should get out or do less, plain and simple. That should not matter relative to where I got in. It should just matter when we look at it. Is it working? Is it going up? Awesome. Is it going down? Okay, that's a problem. But I'm not worried. I'm worried about when the market tells me it's over, not whether I'm right or wrong. The most important rule of trading is to play great defense, not offense. I have this quote on my wall in my trading room. This leads me to my rule number one. If you ask any of my traders, what's rule number one? They'll say, come back tomorrow. And what this means is that if you can come back tomorrow and the day after and the day after, if you can just hang around, you're going to figure out how to win in this game. You're going to figure out how to make it. People tend to have this belief that oh, nothing great happens to me. It's bullshit. Great things happen to you all the time. The question is, do you recognize them? The question is, are you grateful for them? And the question is, are you prepared for them? Great trades are going to come your way. I guarantee it. But in order for that to happen, you have to be around to have the great trade come to you. Like I say, I basically say, if you can stick around, lightning will strike. The big trade will come that will make everything change. But if you're not here, you can't get struck by lightning. I like to think about great sports teams. Every championship team has a great defense. Why is defense so important? Defense carries the team whenever they go through their inevitable periods where their offense struggles or the offense goes cold. Offense is always streaky. It's not consistent. You go on a run of great trades, you go on a run of poor trades. What we need to do is we need to play great defense around our trades, around our positions, so we never bleed too much. And then when the great trades come, we can really maximize them. We play defense first, you'll protect your capital and it'll give you the time to get on a hot streak. And that's all the difference in the world. So there you have it for this week. I've given you five more tips, tips six through 10. Really internalize what I've said, because there's a lot of psych psychological meaning in these tips that can massively improve your trading. And on that note, what day is today? That's right, it's Tuesday. But it's not just any Tuesday. No, it's Trader Tip Tuesday, where I come to you like today with tips that help you take your performance to an elite level. So thanks for watching and I will see you next Tuesday.